Hi, I'm Lloyd Pye, and my new ebook, Intervention Theory Essentials, is all about origins. When it comes to the subject of origins, in our world only two positions are granted any merit. Either God did it or nature did it. One or the other, but not both. In this context, God and nature have nothing to do with each other, and neither do the proponents of both sides of that debate, creationists and evolutionists, who are usually called Darwinists after Charles Darwin, the man who gave them a scientific form of religious dogma in 1859. Understand that this debate is about the origins of everything, of the universe, of the solar system, of earth, of the first forms of life, of all the subsequent forms of life, dinosaurs, primates, and of course, humans. Most people are unaware that a third option exists, the intervention theory, which says God didn't do it, nature didn't do it, they did it. And who are they? Some people call them aliens, and some call them extraterrestrial biological entities, or EBEs. In my ebook, I call them terraformers. Whoever they are, they are living beings of some kind, whether human-like or otherwise, from somewhere beyond Earth, very likely beyond the solar system, but probably within the galaxy. They have terraformed our planet since it was coalescing with the rest of the solar system around 4.5 billion years ago. In the ebook, I go over in detail the steps they must have taken. First, they had to put a life form here that could survive any hellish environment that a congealing protoplanet could generate. Next, they had to be anaerobic, able to live without oxygen because no oxygen would be on a protoplanet. But even more important, they had to create oxygen as a byproduct of their life processes. Lo and behold, that is exactly what the terraformers delivered. Oxygen was essential for many reasons, especially reducing the abundant amounts of free iron into iron oxide, rust, so free oxygen could enter the atmosphere and begin to accumulate. That too, the terraformers delivered. Once enough oxygen was free in the atmosphere, much larger and much more sophisticated bacteria could survive in it, so they too were delivered, as if on a calculated schedule. Some of the new bacteria needed oxygen to live, but others created abundant amounts of it as a part of their life cycles. Oxygen production carried up to and through 50 million years of dominance by the mysterious, still not well understood, Ediacaran biota. Then came the most bizarre event in biological history, the Cambrian explosion, which is still so badly understood that most scientists avoid trying to make Darwinian sense of it. Why? because evolution could not possibly have had anything to do with it. Yet science has no choice but insists that it did, somehow. After the Cambrian explosion came all other forms of higher life on Earth, including the dinosaurs and the earliest primates. But what about those early primates, especially the ones known as Miocene apes? My new ebook will introduce you to several topics you won't have known about previously, so this subject is likely to catch you profoundly unaware. I'll explain why it's to the advantage of mainstream science to keep you ignorant about it. What they try hard to avoid discussing are hominoids, the bipedal primates found on every continent except Antarctica, and which go by names like Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, Abominable Snowman, Almas, Sadapa, and one that has become famous in recent years, the hobbits of Indonesia. Ponder this question. What if apes were bipedal from the start of their time on Earth, around 23 million years ago? What if, for those 23 million years, the ancestors of chimps and gorillas have shared the world stage with the ancestors of today's widely dispersed but steadfastly ignored hominoids? And what if all of them are still sharing that stage today, right now? If they are, if that speculation is true, then all of the creatures anthropologists assure us are pre-humans are in fact post-Miocene apes. And if that is true, then humans have no place on the natural flowchart of life on Earth. That in turn means we must have appeared here very recently. And if that is true, then it could only have occurred by one of two methods. Either we were brought here entirely and intact from somewhere else, 
or we were created here by genetic manipulation and or selective breeding to serve one or more specific purposes for those who decided to create us. Those two options leave absolutely no room for evolution or for God, so they are not welcome in the ongoing and quite intense debate about origins between the creationists and the Darwinists. But as my ebook shows, the overwhelming bulk of evidence is with neither of those positions. The best evidence by far is on the side of intervention theory, and the amount of it and the quality of it will surprise you. If you're one of the millions of people who have ever paused to wonder if religion and science have been telling you the truth about your origins, I'm sure you'll find that what you learn in Intervention Theory Essentials will satisfy your doubts. Check it out at www.lloydpie.com. It's 350 pages long with 230 photos and illustrations and 40,000 words. An average reader needs three hours to get through it and those three hours will rock your worldview. Trust me.